Reparations Forever. Please help me to welcome Sam Anderson. Yeah. Thank you, my brother Horace, and thank you for the uh, uh, Pan-African community of Central New York for um, having me come here and talk to you on this day of uh, African Liberation Day. Um, my first African Liberation Day was organized in 1969 in Harlem. We had created a group called the Pan-African Solidarity Day Committee. And that group primarily was dedicated to taking up what was raised, uh, as Sister McKinney said, in 1958 uh, and 1963 in the Organization of, of African Unity to take up the um, solidarity movement of African peoples uh, in Harlem. Harlem is rich in history, um, and we were young people then who felt that it was important to support the liberation movements that were just coming on the scene, just building. The armed struggle movement out of, coming out of, out of South Africa and out of Namibia and out of Angola. Uh, and out of Mozambique to just beginning, all these, these groups are just beginning. And I had uh, personal special relations with, with some of the freedom fighters because Lincoln University during the uh, mid, early and mid 1960s housed some of the future leaders of the African uh, liberated Af Southern African countries. Uh, for example, the present uh, president of uh, Namibia is a, a went to Lincoln University. The former um, uh, poet, national poet of uh, South Africa, Carol Petsy Colton Steely, was a close friend of mine and fellow student at Lincoln. And there were so many others that were so, that came out of Lincoln uh, and uh, and and uh, uh, who became. Uh, very important uh, parts, uh, leaders in the uh, African liberation struggles in their respective countries. And so we had, in Harlem, we had uh, known of these, because uh, these folk, because they were our fellow uh, students, and they lived with us. Um, Namibia's first office was in somebody's apartment where they also um, uh, slept. So, uh, you know, Swapo in New York, I was saying. And so, you know, so 69, um, we felt emboldened to make a move to go out and, and have these demonstrations, this march in Harlem in 69 and 1970. And that is like a precursor to the development on a national scale, as you saw in the film, uh, 1972, with the uh, African Liberation Day. Unfortunately for me, I was driving early in the morning to get to, uh, from New York, from Harlem, to get to um, DC, and a drunken driver hit me, hit me on Riverside Drive just a mile from the George Washington Bridge, and just messed up my car, and so I had to stay <laughs> to deal with the car. Everybody else in the car, you know, we had, I think about seven people in the car, it was a station wagon, and we, uh, everybody else, you know, said, well, uh, uh, sorry, Sam, but we got to go. <laughs> so they so they went. Um, but you know, I, I was part of the African Liberation Support Committee from its beginning, um, and um, the, a, a lot of people you saw on, on the screen there, we were we were uh, part of the same group. We were comrades. Now, bringing us to the issue of reparations. Um, as, as uh, our sister said, uh, you know, an aspect of reparations is healing, is healing. We have been wounded as a people, no matter where we are in the world as African people. The impact of chattel slavery and the impact of the slave trade, the impact of the devastation of uh, Africa in terms of its uh, agricultural capabilities, environmental stuff, and so forth, 
is, is, is something that we have to understand was healing. Psychological healing, spiritual healing, physical healing. And the healing and, uh, process that um, uh, must occur uh, in, in the African soil itself. One of the outgrowths is uh, uh, one of the outgrowths of slavery, as um, Brother um, uh, uh, Walter Rodney had pointed out in How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, which is a must-read book if you haven't read it. It should be in your family library. It should be in your school library. Uh, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. One of the things he pointed out was that the Sahel could not spread as rapidly as it did if it wasn't for Europeans forcing one crop economies on their colonial African territories. Because the Africans knew how to hold back the Sahel, hold back that desert by growing various kinds of vegetation over you know, crop rotation, et cetera, et cetera. And once they stopped that, the Sahel rapidly expanded uh, into other areas where, they, where traditionally African people were able to uh, hold it back. And so, so today we have vast regions of, of Africa, greater than the size of the United States, that's part of the Sahel, which did not have to happen if, if it wasn't for the enslavement process and colonialism. So that's one thing. Now, um, with my help here, <laughs> we're going to the first uh, uh, slide. Um, another quote from Walter Rodney um, is something that we need to understand as at its base. The process by which captives were obtained on African soil was not trade at all. It was through warfare, trickery, banditry, and kidnapping. Okay, that's the basis. And you have apologists, black and white, who say that um, slavery was um, about Africans selling um, Africans to white people. That is an oversimplification. And that's why it's important if people don't have this historical understanding that in which Rodney has laid out in his book, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, we're talking about a process of warfare, trickery, banditry, and kidnapping that evolved from 1444 to 1888 when the Portuguese finally gave up um, the slave trade into, into Brazil, 1888. 1444, when the Portuguese first bum rushed into um, the Upper Guinea coast, into, in, in, into West Africa, to 1888, that the slave trade evolved from being very crude, very violent, it was always violent, but very crude and violent, snatching of Africans, to something of, uh, much more sophisticated, uh, divide and conquer, as we know with our, uh, uh, the stories of uh, Native Americans in the U.S., the, the whole aspect of dividing and, and, and conquering Native Americans, the Creeks fighting with whites against the other indigenous uh, uh, people in, 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 in the Georgia, Mississippi area, and, and the Carolinas in order for them to, uh, in order for the whites to, to move forward. So we had similar things evolving in Africa. But for the most part, the overwhelming aspect of, of enslaving Africans was a work of warfare, trickery, banditry, and kidnapping. Well documented, not only in, in, in Walter Rodney's book, but a number of other books that have come out since the, uh, his, his, his writings. Um, we can go to the next one. And the important thing also to understand in terms of people of African descent uh, who are not in Africa, and in some cases, even for people who are in Africa nowadays, in the 21st century, is that we are Africans because we are born, we are not, not because we were born in Africa, but because Africa is born in us. Look around you and behold in us our greatness. Greatness is an African possibility. 
you can make it yours. Famous uh, African-American photographer, Chester Higgins. Um, 